is chicks galore in here. So I've transferred the little tiny quail. We did lose one, um, it just hatched and it must have been weak and it died. I'm sorry about the watermarks on the uh, on the incubator, on the brooder there. But we've got 13 crazy little babies. They're one day old. They're now going mad, running around, having their food. The drink is here, it's got um, grit in it so that they don't drown. So we've got them. Down here we've got the older ones who don't need a light anymore. They just have their their uh, electric hen. But they're growing fast, as you can see. So these are only two weeks old, these quail. And look at them. Don't they look great? And then they're Barry's babies as well there. Popping around. Hello. So yeah, tons of chicks in the house, but they're all doing well. This is to stop them bouncing out of the brooder and falling off the table um, and getting sniffed at by the cat and the dog. So today I am sorting out tools. So one of my elderly gardening uh, clients died a couple of months ago and her sons were clearing out the shed and they said I could take what I wanted um, that, they, that was left. So I filled the car with stuff. Um, so I put most of the pots and stuff down the bottom, but look, I've got a wheelbarrow and I've got all of these tools. Now obviously these tools are quite old and some of them are not going to have sharp blades, but I can sharpen those blades up. And the main thing is, every time we go up to the farm, we have to fill the car with all the stuff we need and we've got nowhere to leave anything because, you know, I don't want to leave something that I've bought up there in case it's nicked. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort through all these tools and we're going to actually take the wheelbarrow and all of these tools up to the farm. They can be left there because, you know, if they're stolen, um, it's no financial loss to us. I honestly don't think they will be stolen because nobody knows kind of where the farm is or where stuff is. Um, but there's some good stuff in there. There's rakes, brooms, uh, some hose. So I'm looking forward to giving everything a good sharpen. And there's nothing like giving tools a fresh lease of life, especially when these were all going to go to the tip. Well, Brewster is in the living room because he's been sneezing. Um... But he's not got any uh, discharge and he's not gurg. Hello. He's not gurgly either. I mean, he's only sneezing now and then. So it might be that he's just a little bit allergic to some dust, dust or something that he's got in his nose. But just to be on the safe side, he is inside. Um, I don't know if you can see, but his leg down here is a little bit scaly as well. So he's got a bit of a leg mite infestation. So actually, having him inside is no bad thing because it means I can put... Um, Pseudocreme, which is a great, a really good cream. So you can just smother this in pseudocreme, and not only does it um, kill the light, kill the uh, the little parasites in there, the light and um, the mites uh, suffocates them. It also makes the the skin, the leg skin um, soft, so it can slot back into place. So hopefully, Brewster, you'll be all right, won't you, boy? He's sleepy because it's the middle of the night. Well, the Spanish flag is starting to look amazing. So here is the vine. It's Mina Labata, or Spanish flag. As you can see, why it's called that Spanish flag name from its colour. But isn't it a fantastic vine? It's really just becoming quite a blaze on this and you can see how much the vines take taken over this trellis. It's just, as I said before, it's sad that it's an annual because it would be amazing coverage. I mean, imagine this all year round just covered. If it was an evergreen, it would be great. But it is beautiful. Um, and I've got, there's another plant there and there's another plant there, but obviously they are under the shade of the tree, whereas this one's more out in the open, so it's obviously it's done better. But I really think it's just a spectacular, plant. I'm definitely going to grow it again next year. But in the meantime, I'm also going to find some more plants to cover this trellising because it's, now it's, now I've got the first plant kind of up there and covering, you can see what a difference it makes just having greenery all the way up rather than just this horrible trellising on show. I'm spending a great deal of time stood here. I can't imagine why, because it's not like these are like the, one of the most cutest things I've ever seen in the world. It's not like they're really tiny, fluffy, beautiful 
bundles of fluff that I just want to hold and coo over. Okay, maybe it is. Aren't they darlings? And they're growing so fast. They're already, they're about twice the size they were two days ago. So they're already about double the size when they came out. A lot of that is fluff, of course. But they do grow amazingly quickly. But they won't be like this for long. Such little busy things. Always busying themselves around and eating food and finding out what each other's up to. I adore them. So today I am up at the farm, we're camping and I've been cutting. So this is what I've cut so far. I've cut up some wood and I've started chainsawing and clearing this pond of all these trees so we can get some light in and regenerate it. Unfortunately, it's the first time I've ever used a chainsaw and uh, I actually caught the teeth of the chain inside this branch um, and I snagged them so now they're not running around the blade properly so I'm gonna have to buy a new chain. So that is the work with the chainsaw done for today but I'm gonna pull some more of this felled wood, this is all hawthorn, pull it all out. Um, so at least the pond project has started now but as you can see there's a hell of a lot to do. But we're gonna get there and it's fun. So that's the main thing, isn't it? It's fun. So that is today's job. Clearing and spending time on the farm. Here's the rebel, all in their dressing gowns still from the morning. Oh, we've got a lovely mud cake here. It's not cake, it's dessert. Oh, it's dessert, yum. Wow, black breeze. And so this morning I've just been starting to tackle some of this mess because this is where we're going to put the nuttery and then there's going to be a willow living willow dome in the center here that you can walk through and then i'm going to make a little um buddlier hedge either side of here so obviously a lot of work i'm not going to do the major clearing back until the winter when obviously all the nettles and the leaves of the brambles have died back because then it's a lot easier to find the center pull it out cut it and then burn it um, but I'm just doing a, while we're here, I'm doing a little bit of clearing. I have cleared all of this again already. Um, so we need to keep following this line around. So, as always, a vast amount of work to do by hand. But you know, I enjoy it. So, it's not so much work when you actually are liking what you're doing.